In any professional test framework, most of the work like opening a browser, setting up data, cleaning up data happens behind the scenes silently. And in a PyTest framework, that magic happens using fixtures. And in this video, we are going to talk about fixtures. We're going to look at examples. We're going to talk about why we need them and how we're going to use them. Fixtures are a fundamental and super powerful features of PyTest. PyTest is one of the most popular frameworks in PyTest. Fixtures make code clean, reusable and avoid duplicates. And best way to learn fixtures is to actually do them. I cannot really explain them. I have to show you how they act, how they get applied. So we're going to go right into the code and look at, we can look at that. So the code that I'm going to use for this example is going to be in the description. It is this repository that I have here. And um, if you look at the table of content and there is a part that says mastering fixtures, you can just go to that section. And in, within this framework, I created example specifically for this video. So under tests, when you go to fixture examples, you will be able to follow along and you should, uh, you should be able, you should actually be following along, not just watching the video. Uh, you just check out this code because I'm going to create a bunch of videos related to this code. So just practice, look at what fixtures are test things out and see how they work. Okay. All right. So let's jump right into VS code and start talking about them. So this is the same code I just showed you. I have fixture examples. We're going to start with the basic fixture yield. So the main point of a fixture, the use case, what we use it for is setup and teardown. So an automation a setup and a teardown, hopefully you know by now, is preparing something for your test. Then after the test is done, best just cleaning up, right? Let's say you wanna create a database connection. So you create a database connection before you test at the setup, your, all your tests would run, then you close the database connection. Uh, one of the most common one is you open a browser in a setup, your test would run in that browser and you close the browser in a teardown. Another uh, example, which would work both for the front end and the back end, is let's say you, your test is to create a user. So in your test, you create a user which corrupts the data, right? You create fake data in the database in the, in the system. Then in your teardown, you probably want to go and delete that user. You want to clean up the environment. So in that example, you might not have a setup, but you definitely have a teardown because in your test, you created a some kind of data, but you don't want to keep that data, so you, you delete it in teardown. So that's very common in automation, right? So if you're using a PyTest framework, fixtures is how you're going to use it. If you've used like robot framework before, which I love, uh, there is a keyword called teardown and a keyword called setup. You don't have to do it yourself like PyTest, robot framework will handle it. But PyTest, they give you this, this powerful uh, feature called fixtures that will allow you to do that. So what a fixture is, is just a function, but unlike other test functions, it doesn't say, it doesn't have the word test in the name. Right? It's just any function. You just follow all the uh, the basic Python function naming rules and you just name a function. Then what makes it special is you have a, you add a decorator at PyTest fixture. So you import PyTest, PyTest.fixture, you add that decorator. Now that function becomes a fixture. And we use a yield, right? If you don't know what yield is, you should look it up. It's like a return, but it's, it's special. If you do a yield, like normally when you have a return, the, you call that function, it returns something, and it's, that function is done. But if you have a yield, you call that function, it will return something, and then it will come, once you're done with the function that's calling it, it will actually come back to this function. I don't know if that's a good way to explain it, but it's a special thing in, in uh, Python. And you're gonna see how it is being used here. So it's just a function, it does something, it yields, then it does something. So basically the first part is the setup, the second part is the teardown, before and after the yield. Now that is the fixture. We're going to look at a bunch of those. So don't worry if that didn't make much sense. Now we have a test here. This is a test, test example using fixtures. We can quickly run this test, right? I can just say pytest dash K, the name of the test, and I'm going to put dash S so we can see the print statement. All right, so the test runs. We don't need to look at that right now. So what this test is doing is it's using this fixture. So the way uh, we apply fixtures, we have two different ways. So we're going to talk about both of them. And this is one of the ways. Um, this is a less common way, but it's much easier to understand. You just say use fixture, so it's clean. Okay, I'm using a fixture and you just give it the name of the fixture. So this function will use a fixture. So what happens here is when this test runs, in this sense, it's using this fixture, everything that is before the yield will execute, then this test will execute, then anything after the yield gets executed, okay? Let me repeat that. Since this test is using that fixture, when this test is executed, the first thing that gets run or that gets executed is everything that's before the yield inside of the fixture. Then the test will run, then everything after the yield 
would run. So let's look at the example here the, when, when we run this. We just run this test. If you see this test when it runs, it's going to print I am the test and I am running now. But before this got even executed, before this got printed, what did we see first? We see the setup get printed first. So everything before the yield gets executed, then it goes to the test and it executes the test, right? Then it goes right back to the fixture and it executes the stuff that is after the yield. So you can see the three steps here, two of them come from the fixture. So everything before the, before the yield, the test, then everything after the yield. And that is one of the ways we apply fixtures. And the, the reason we apply fixtures this way is when we don't need any data that is created inside of the fixture itself. In this case, the fixture is not returning something. It's not creating an object that we're going to need in our test. It's just doing stuff. We don't need any of that information. If we do need some of the information that was created here in the test, that's another way of doing it. For that one, we're going to look at this example, test return value fixture. So when we look at this fixture, this test, this uh, example here, we have one fixture, the same thing. The name of the fixture is use credentials. We add a decorator to it, right? Add, add PyTest fixture. And this guy, what does this fixture do? It, it does print just like the previous one we saw. It has a dictionary, right? An object called credentials. Then in the yield, it's actually returning it. Well, yielding it. I guess that would be the right word, yielding it. But think of it just like it's returning it. Then after the yield, we have some more code. Now this test here does not have that at pytest mark that use fixture. Instead, we pass in the name of the fixture, basically the name of the function here. This is the function. This is, we're going to pass that in here as a parameter to this test. When we do that inside of that test, we can access this parameter just like we would access any other object. Whatever the object this yield returned, right? Yielded, I'm so used to saying return. Whatever this, whatever object this yielded it becomes the parameter here. So now if we run this test, so I'm just gonna copy the name and I'm gonna run it. I'm gonna clear the screen and clear it a little bit. I'm gonna do I test dash K dot and dash S. Okay, I don't know why it took a little bit of time, but it did. So let's look at the print here. What, ha what happened in this state? Since we're using this fixture, everything before the yield is supposed to happen, the first thing that should happen is the setup print. There we go. We have the setup printed here. Then the credentials got returned. We don't see anything about that. It's just returned. Then what happens is the test prints this. We see that the test is printing that. Then we just printed the parameter itself. When we print the parameter itself, we see it's the object. It's that dictionary that we returned or we yielded from the fixture. Then more, more code that's part of the test. Once the test go finishes, it goes right back to the fixture and it executes everything that's after the yield. That's when the teardown comes in the picture. So the, this is the second way of applying fixtures. You just take the name of the function or the fixture, you pass it in as a parameter, and then that parameter, you can access it. Like whatever is returned here, that is what this guy is. Pretty straightforward, okay? So that's the second way of applying fixtures. Now there is more about fixtures than that, there is something called a scope. So when we need to talk about scope, we're gonna look at this example here, test scope fixtures. Now, this is just just the other, like the other one. Let's look at this. So we got, we have four functions here. Two of them are tests. We have test this, test that. Then we have two fixtures. Now, the only thing difference, uh, different than the fixtures we saw before is we specify the scope. In this case, this one says scope is session. This one says scope is function. So there are four kinds of scopes that PyTest supports. There is function, session, module, and class. And you get to specify which session, where well, which scope you want. The previous ones we did not specify. So if we don't specify, by default, it's going to do function. So the function scope is the default. But if you want to run it per session, per module, then you would have to specify or per class. So what that means is when does this uh, fixture run? Does it run for every function? Does it run for the entire session once? Or does it run for the entire module? The module is like the whole file, right? If you have one file and you have like 20 tests in there, and if you have a function, uh, a fixture with a scope of module, it's gonna run once for the entire module. When we have a session here, it's gonna run once for the entire session. The entire session is whenever you run that PyTest command, when you're running, let's say you have 200 tests and you hit PyTest run. 
that is a session. Like that whole process is one session. And even if you have multiple tests in different files and everything that uses a fixture, but that fixture has a scope of a session, it's just going to run once. If it's a class, it's going to run once for that class. If it's a function, it's going to run for every single function. So we got these two examples. We have a session example and a function example, and we're going to look at that. So here we're using it for the, uh, the second way of doing things. We're passing in the name of the fixture as a parameter. So we have two fixtures, session scope fixture, function scope fixture. We have two tests. For each of those tests, we're passing in the, uh, the fixture names as parameters because we're using both of them, right? Now let's run it and see what happens. To quickly look at it, they just print messages. We look at this code, this one, they just print a message. When we look at the test, it also just prints a message. Now we're gonna run everything that has um, the word using scopes, right? Because they both have the same uh, substring or a partial string in the name. So I can run both of them with one command. I'm gonna do clear. I'm gonna do pytest dash K. And then I'm just gonna use that, that substring and I'm gonna do dash S, so we we'll run both of them. So let's see what happens. So we run two tests as you can see. Now, that one of the one of the fixtures is meant for session. So even if we have two tests, it's only gonna run once for that session. So when we look at the setup session, right? Setup session scope, it only runs once, you don't see it again. There's the session one, the setup runs once, the teardown runs once, that's it. Now the other fixture we have is a function fixture. So it's supposed to run for every function. So we're gonna see it running two times for each of the tests. So we're gonna see run once, then the test run, test one, then the teardown for the function. Then the setup for the function, the test two, teardown for the function. Since this is supposed to run for every function, it's going to run for every function. So that's what a scope is. Does it run once for each function? or does it run once for each class? Does it run once for the whole module? Or does it run once for the whole session? So that's important to know. Uh, it all depends on the use case. There is no one size fit all thing. Depends on what you wanna do. For uh, for a browser, for example, what I do is when for my fixture that opens a browser, a lot of times I do wanna use different fresh browser for most of my tests, but there are some tests, let's say, I wanna go to a login page and I don't log in, but I wanna check in all the, all the fields are there. They're visible, right? I wanna make sure the login label is there, the username input is there, the password input is there, and the registration is there. I, I'm not changing anything about the page, I just wanna make sure they're there. For those kind of tests, I wanna open it once, the browser, I wanna to go to that page once, then execute a bunch of tests. So in that case, I would use a scope of either a class or a module. Uh, usually I do a class. For my front end, I use, I use classes and there's a reason I'm about to explain. Two different ways of applying fixture. We looked at um, the scopes. And uh, the last thing I wanna show you is how we use fixtures with classes because there is one special thing that is super powerful that I use all the time. In all my bootcamp framework or my major frameworks, even my courses, my Python and Selenium courses, that, that is what I use. So when you have a fixture, you give it a scope of a class if you wanna use it with a class. So here, so we have test class data. This is just a fixture, just a simple uh, function. Then we have a class with two tests inside of it. This class has two tests and it's a valid class, a test class. It starts with the word test, right? Now we're gonna use the first way of applying a fixture. We're gonna use at pytest that mark use fixtures and then we use a, uh, we, we give it the name of the fixture. Now, like I said before, the we use this when we don't need any data that was created in the fixture. But in this case, it's a little different. We can still use data that was created in the fixture. This this is very specific use case when you're using classes. That's pretty awesome. So what you do is you in, in the fixture, you give it a parameter called request, which is a built-in object. It's a very special built-in object that was created by PyTest. So you don't you can't you don't get to play with the name or anything. You have to put request. What that does is it will give you access to the class that's calling the fixture. So here inside of the fixture, you can do request dot CLS dot some variable name. That assigns a class variable to the class that's calling the fixture. So now this class is calling this fixture, right? So in this fixture, when we do request dot CLS some variable, inside of this class, we can access that variable by doing self dot the variable name. How cool is that? That is so helpful. Again, just if you don't really get the whole concept, you just look at it as like a rule, right? For a long time, that's how I understood it. It's a rule, this is how it works, so I'm gonna use it. So the rule is you're gonna pass in an object. This is a, you, you should know it's a special object. 
And once you pass in this object, requests, you have to be request. Then you're going to do request.cls, right? That's easy to remember. It's a class. And that, any variable you want. So request.cls is a variable. Then inside of that class, if the class is using that fixture, we're going to do self.userID. So here, I can define a variable saying request.cls, cls.foo is called to bar, right? Request. Why did I mess this up? Request. Now, inside of this class, I can always just print self.foo if I wanted to. Because this is Python 3, self.foo. I have access to that variable by doing self. That's a very special thing just specifically for classes. Very awesome to use, and most of the time that's what I use. One additional information that is a little bit, it's not about fixtures, but in general, there is a, a file called conf test. If you're working with a PyTest framework, there's a special file called conf test, and you usually define fixtures inside of the conf test. If you define the fixture inside of the conf test, it will be available throughout the entire framework. Any of your tests in any file will have access to this uh, this fixture, so you can just apply to that fixture. You can say use fixture, or you can just pass it in as a parameter. Um, a good example is the browser, right? Opening a browser. You want to open a browser in a lot of different files. So you will put it in conf test, so all your front-end files, all your front-end tests will have access to this fixture. All the other examples we saw so far, the fixture is within the same file. You have the test, we have the fixture. We have the test, we have the fixture. But if you do want the fixture to be available in more than one place, we want it in multiple files, this conf test.py is a very special file that you can put your fixtures there. So that's a topic for another time, but I just want to bring it up. Most of the time when you see fixtures, you're going to see them in this conftest.py. Hopefully you found that useful. Fixtures are confusing. If you are confused, don't be like intimidated or discouraged or anything like that. They're really confusing for people. You just have to practice them. You have to try them out. Like just watching me is not going to help. Trust me, it's not because this is coding. You do have to practice. The best thing you can do right now if you want to understand fixtures is check out the code that I provided and run through the examples I, I went through. But it's not just about running them. Change things out. Comment something out. Add more print statements. Ch challenge yourself. What if I do this? What if I change the module, the scope from module to class? What if I change the scope to session? What happens? Experiment. That's really the best way you're going to learn. Okay. So if you have questions, let me know. If it was confusing, put it in the comment. Maybe I'll create another expanded video. This, this video is already too long. Put in the comment, let me know if was this helpful, like did it help, did it help understand uh, fixtures, how to use them and things like that. So I'd love to know, uh, you know, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully you like the video. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're new to me. All I do is create content related to software engineering and testing. I'm, I'm an SDET, senior SDET. All my content is about helping you become a better SDET. And I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You can work with me directly if you want to become an SDET. I have a membership where you get access to all my courses and and me like asking questions and community and all of that just all the links are down there if you do want to become a professional estate or qr machine engineer check out all that information so the next video is going to be about pytest and make sure you check out the playlist and subscribe i'll see you on the next one